Okay, just finished assembling the entire uh, soldering station, and uh, I'll go through it right now with you. Um, here's the power switch down here. If you, when, as soon as I turn the switch on, it'll display the uh, model number AOU. 2703A plus and then it uh, all the display indicators read off. On the right hand side are all the uh, individual buttons. Uh, the top one is the heat gun, then the uh, automate which is a program mode, the smoke absorber, the soldering iron, and the desoldering iron. And on the left you have the uh, pressure or vacuum indicator with uh, the indicator ball and here's your control pad up and down either on the hot air gun temperature, the uh, air pressure, soldering iron temperature, desolder temperature. Uh, this is the inlet for the suction whether it be for the desoldering gun or the smoke absorber. Uh, this is the input for the desoldering uh, gun and the soldering iron. Let's start with the soldering iron. Um, I completely assembled the base here or the holder and that's the whole holder that's complete. It's actually a very nice solid piece Nice quality steel. Now it's got the holder for the uh, spool of solder. Uh, it's got a trough here for water and the sponge that'll, when it absorbs water, it'll increase in size. And like I said, it's a nice solid unit. What I didn't know is there are many different versions of this holder actually six different versions that uh, I guess can come with the uh, AOU 2703. We got the 2660, the 2660B, 2661, and they're all slightly different. Uh, 2663, 2661B, and 2663B. Um, the one I've seen on eBay usually is the one with the uh, trough for the, uh, it's actually this one here. It's this one here. It has the uh, trough for the sponge and uh, for the uh, metal wool cleaner. Uh, that's not the one that I received in the kit that I got. Uh, the one I received just has the trough with the sponge. So let's start with the soldering iron. Uh, one thing is, it really didn't come with directions, believe it or not, and the most important thing uh, on putting the soldering iron together, namely the um, tip. Um, from what I gather, you just slide it in. There's the tip. There's nothing to loosen, although this will, this piece does loosen, um, but it doesn't do anything. It's just threaded, and I think that's just to re to remove the uh, smoke absorber if you wanted to remove that and not use it. I don't know why it seems to be a nice piece, and uh, or it's nice that it has the smoke absorber. So I'm gonna screw that back on. And I wasn't too happy with the fact that there isn't any locking mechanism for this or any way to, you know, make sure it's secure in there. So you just push it in and as far down as it goes and that's about it. When you want to remove it, you just pull it out actually. And if it's hot, it does come with this uh, removal pad. So if this is too hot to remove, my assumption is you grab it like this and pull out the tip. I think that's what this is for. Okay, um, on the controls, the, the 
this is the button for the soldering iron. So I'm going to turn that on. One thing I want to mention is that all the temperatures are in centigrade, not Fahrenheit. Um, although this unit does come in uh, a, a 220 version and a 110 ver volt version, um, they all read in centigrade. I think that's something that they should upgrade to if it's a US model, but right now they're not. Uh, when you turn the unit on, it displays the temperature in centigrade, and of course you can regulate the tip temperature by using these buttons. They're kind of a membrane button. I wish they were a little more pronounced, but some because sometimes you gotta get in there with your nail to really push it up or down. So we're just gonna increase this, let's say, to 390 degrees centigrade. Um, after you release the button, it shows the tip temperature. Let's, let's, let's make it even higher. 420. When you release it, it shows the tip temperature. Um, to turn on the solder, uh, I'm sorry, the smoke absorber, you push this button. Mine was a little sticky at first. I thought it, was it wasn't was working properly, um, but um, it seems to loosen itself. If you notice, it seems like a momentary switch, but it's not. It's actually, you have to actually push it in there to click um, to hold in the on position. So now the soldering iron's on and the suction, the smoke absorber, which is pulling out of here, this opening. Um, one of the things I don't like is the fact that if you're using the this is the suction for the smoke absorber. If you're using the smoke absorber, you have to detach the uh, hot the hot air gun. Uh, I'm sorry, the desol you have to detach the desoldering gun um, hose. It would have been nice if they had them side by side, a provision where you can have them both plugged in at the same time, and maybe a valve or something that would. Um, switch back and forth between whatever device you're using. Uh, as it is now, if I wanted to, I'm going to turn that off. If I want to switch to the desoldering gun, I have to undo that. Put the desoldering gun in. It does. It does allow you to spin it a little bit. So, so the, the hose is pretty. Uh, soft. Turn it on and now I have the desoldering gun in. Um, so I'm going to turn, uh, put back the soldering iron. Okay, I'm going to turn the smoke absorber back on again. And the smoke absorber does not allow you to regulate the air pressure. It's just one uh, set volume of suction. You can't increase, you cannot increase or decrease the suction. And if you notice, the ball is all the way at the highest uh, mark here. Since this unit only has one pump, uh, air pump, the pump not only works for the, de the uh, smoke absorber, it also works for the desoldering gun. Um, so you cannot uh, use them simultaneously. The exhaust for the smoke absorber and the desoldering gun is actually the hot air gun tip. I can feel cool air coming out of the tip here. So it does not have a, an exhaust vent on the, on the unit itself. The exhaust is, comes out of the uh, the hot air, the hot air gun. And that's about it for the soldering iron. Uh, it does fit nicely in, into its holder here when you're not using it. Um, and the holder also has provisions for extra tips.
The next thing I'm going to talk about is the desoldering gun. Uh, again, as I discussed before, in order to use it, I'm going to have to remove first remove the soldering iron vacuum hose and put in the desoldering gun vacuum hose. Uh, also, to inside here is a little sponge, little filter sponge that comes with it. Comes with two extra ones also in the set. Put that back in and put that in. So here's the desoldering gun. Um, it's actually a nice quality piece. It's uh, it is plastic, but it's a uh, high temperature plastic. Uh, feels nice in your hand. Uh, some of the features on it. Uh, this is the button to. The trigger, I should say, to allow the suction. Um, on the back side is a release knob. This is to release uh, this portion uh, so you can clean it. I'll show you how that works. We push down on this, and that uh, back holder assembly pulls back and allows you to remove this piece here. And about that. Uh, this is the filter spring where your uh, molten solder gets trapped. Um, it's recommended that you put a little Vaseline on here uh, in order to assist uh, the uh, solder from uh, uh, falling off and not sticking to the spring. And on the end of this uh, filter spring is a rubber grommet that goes right inside this tube here. In this tube, there's a small uh, filter, sponge filter. Uh, it is recommended that you wet this down prior to use. Um, it'll help uh, trap uh, any uh, dirt or uh, solder or contaminants from going in back through the tube inside to your pump. So re reassembly is relatively quick. Push put this piece in here filter spring and then the filter pipe. I just lift the spring up a little bit that slides down. This piece retracts back and just kind of it's like that and then you snap this back. Another nice feature on this uh, desoldering iron is this little indicator here. This is a pressure indicator. So what will happen is if your uh, tip gets clogged or starts to get dirty, this indicator will show, uh, show you that that's happening before it actually uh, becomes totally clogged and, and, and you're not uh, sucking any of the solder up. And I'll show you how that works. I'm going to turn the unit on and before it gets real hot pull the trigger. Right now it's blue. If I lock the opening, it turns to red. Partially red is okay. Fully red means that it's blocked, which I just triggered it until I release it. Um, the display. This bottom LCD uh, shows the tip temperature. Again, I can increase or decrease that with these buttons here. Turn it up or down. First it shows the set temperature and then it shows the actual temperature. As you can see, it's increasing. When I pull the trigger, I get maximum uh, suction there is no adjustment on the suction. So if you notice, the rest of this, these displays are off and there's nothing to increase or decrease that uh, the, the amount of suction at your tip. Uh, 